Alrighty, does anybody else have any announcements or any questions before we start with the presentation? You know, just problems they've been having? I do. Okay. We've been experiencing at, at our company um, issues with data corruption that happen to be on my ISIM tables. Okay. Um, now, the vast majority of our, we have a couple in ODB, but almost all of our tables are my ISIM. So it could just be that we're seeing it because those are most of our tables. But I was just wondering if you know or anyone else here has experience with data corruption in my ISIM tables. And <coughs> I was dealing with that today, actually. Okay. Um, in our data warehouse, we're using my ISIM tables because it's better for better for what ails you with data warehouses, better for the indexing and better for the, you know, we don't need the high transactional, you know, table locking, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, now, when you say problems with data corruption, I'm guessing that you mean you're having more frequent data corruption than you'd like to have. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, are you doing a lot of transactions, or not transactions, but are you doing a lot of stuff that you might be kind of... We are doing a lot, well, so on one table in particular that we've seen on, we do a lot of writes to it, and we're planning to move that to InnoDB anyways, but um, we're just trying to, want, we're just wondering if my ISIN could potentially be part of the, uh, you know, the factors that are involved. Definitely. EnoDB has a lot more, um, I hate to say EnoDB has a lot more stuff in it that's better for preventing um, corruption, but it, <laughs> it really kind of does, actually. Um, so if you do like my what, ISOM, EnoDB, corruption. What MySQL version are you using? 5.0.27. So it's not the latest of the 5.0. We're going to upgrade also. Um, but um, just that was the latest RPM version, so we also <coughs> manually compile it. But um, I mean, so obviously it could be bug related as well. But. Are you doing any index pref uh, prefixing? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, on, on text tables? Yeah. So what's this? Corrupted my ice tables. So. It does get kind of this stuff. Now, of course, you would probably know if this stuff was happening. If you killed, if the MySQL D process was killed in the middle of the write, you probably know. Um, because this is also, this is the server process, not the client process. Um, a sh computer shutdown, a hardware failure, um, using an external program to modify a table that is being modified on the server at the same time. You might want to look for this if you have a cron script or something. In, so, so I can tell you, a couple weeks ago we had an issue we, we've also had data corruption that's not related to this event, but, but a couple weeks ago, about three weeks ago, we had um, a situation where we have one master and uh, at the time two slaves, mm -hmm. and a third slave was brought online with right. a server ID that conflicted with, oh. with one of the other slaves. Now, <laughs> now this, was realized by the person, this was realized by the person who did it almost immediately, and it was taken offline and fixed and then brought back online. And as far as we could tell for, I think, I, I wasn't there when it happened, but I think for about 15 minutes, we believed that there were no detrimental side effects. Uh -huh. And then about 15 minutes later, I believe, I could be wrong about that, but about 15 minutes later, we got um, several emails from our application, um, which is in PHP, um, with some relatively bizarre uh, database errors that don't really make sense. Like, for example, we've got a duplicate key error on an insert that had an on duplicate key clause, for example. That, um, that's definitely a sign of corruption. Right. I've gotten problems. I've had problems where, you know, and sometimes it was like, you know, I killed it in the middle of a ride or whatever, but I, I don't think I've ever done the duplicate server ID, but yeah. it was when I was playing around with stuff um, and didn't notice it for a while because that table wasn't used. Um. And then, you know, after, you know, I think it was like half an hour, an hour, things just, there were certain things that just weren't working. And, you know, we got, um, we got some notifications that things weren't working. We're like, well, why is it working? It's working for an hour. Why is it working? Right. And it ended up that it was a table that needed to be repaired. Um, have you looked, what, or what does it say in the error logs? Well, yeah, so, so it's actually a long story. This is just the very beginning of it. Sorry. I don't need to go through all the, the details. But basically, so at, this, at the same time, there was apparently a spike in all the resource usage on the on the master and in the um, in the the error logs on the master. There were like, or no, not the master, but the slave, the other slave that had the server ID that was in conflict with the new slave. Right. In that server's error logs, there were tons of 
it was apparently, uh, it kept giving errors saying that the, the um, binary log or relay log um, seems to have like an end of file or something that the apparent mass has shut down or something along those lines. And, um, and it would like start up at the same log position like many, many times a second. And so our best theory is that there was some confusion caused by the server ID conflict that just caused a surge in, in resource usage on the master as a result of requests from the slave. And, and the master actually crashed like two minutes later also. And then we, we switched masters, but then we had data, data corruption issues on the other master we switched to. We repaired all our tables. We actually resourced a full dump from, from our database on, onto the original master, brought back that one back online as the master, and had more issues uh, over the next couple of days. Eventually, we totally re-kicked the boxes, and then we were okay, basically. But we had so so that was that story, and that was that was our biggest issue. But, yeah. Do you do a say? I mean, if you do have a lot of writes, it might be useful to do like a weekly or monthly optimize and repair that kind of thing. Do you do that? Um, we don't do that. We see so optimize would help if you also have deletes, right? Or am I am I wrong about that? that right, it helps defragment. Right. I don't. So on the particular tables we had issues with, I don't think we have a large number of deletes. I think it's mostly inserts and maybe updates as well. I believe that um, Optimize also does the recounting of the statistics, mm -hmm. um, but it would probably be better to do Analyze because I think it's um, shorter, takes, it takes a shorter amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, analyze Table. So, yeah, Analyze Table is going to recalculate a lot of the, um, a lot of the uh, metadata, which, as you know, doesn't always recalculate. Um, MySim does, and that's why table counts and such uh, do that. Um, a check table is also a good thing to, to run. Yep, we we'll definitely run those. Um, and there's nothing on them? Uh, in some cases, there were. Um, but I mean, do you run them regularly? Oh, do we run them regularly? No, we don't. Yeah, that's something that I would run regularly. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessary to do it like every night, right. once a week. Um, the tables that we do, they're heavy, heavy, heavy writes. I mean, you know, we're talking, you know, um, like 3,000 queries per second kind of thing. I think 1,000 of them are writes and 2,000 are reads, or it's 1,000 writes and 3,000 reads. But uh, we only do it once a week, and that's more than enough. So once a week, once a month. Um, so optimized table works for my ISM and EnoDB. Um, it does do the um, defragmentation, which is what it says here. Um, it'll sort the index pages, so if your index has kind of gotten out of whack, and it updates the stable tats, table stats. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what I would recommend, just to see if you're getting other errors. Because check table, I didn't actually know what the problem was until I did a check table. You might also look at show table status. One of the things I was getting today was <laughs> I actually tried to I actually typed repair table law and it came back saying table has crashed. You need to repair it. <laughs> and I was like, I'm trying. I just did a repair table and you wouldn't and, let me. And if you ran so, it again, it still gave you that same. Yeah, I had to use my ISIM check like oh. safe recover um, <coughs> and some other stuff. So. Yeah, but it was really sad to type in a repair table and then have it told me it couldn't do it because it needed to be repaired. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I would recommend. Does anyone else have any recommendations besides a good antacid? I have a question though. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to be migrating an old MySQL database. I'm just wondering, how painful is this going to be? What, what, what kind of things do I have to look forward to? Um, is this it's going from like MySQL 3? to 5? Very, very, very painful. The good news is, if you put in a good maybe two hour, two to four hours of reading, you can make it very not so painful. And if you know the application really well, or whatever the whatever you're using. Um, you might be better off just doing a uh, MySQL dump from the old database and, and then just loading it into the new. That, that's very possible because we're going to once it's all transferred and working. Um, they're going to shut down the old system. So this is, we're actually building this on a new system. So mm -hmm. it sounds much more plausible. Is there, are there major structural changes in the way the database works from 3 to 5? Hmm. It's all documented. <laughs> it's 
a lot of changes. I'm just trying to figure out where it is. So. Yeah, I know. There's, there's, yeah, there, there are. Three to five. Oh. Yeah, yeah no, I know. Just do the MySQL dump. Well, you, you do the MySQL dump, but even that, you have to make sure you have the right options. So yeah. look at all the options mm -hmm. because you want to get all the create options in there. I mean, if you're using three, then you're using all probably my ISOM tables. But if you're trying to use ISOM tables, you're going to want to make sure to change that. Um, let's see. Upgrading my SQL. So, if you look at this, you know, as a general rule, when you upgrade from one release series to another, you should go to the next series rather than skipping. For example, if you're running 3.23 and you want to go to 4.1 or 5.0, go to 4.0 first, then 4.1, then 5.0. Um, Huh. Which is, is good because it will actually help you figure out what it is. Um, this is really, really, really what you want to do right here. Um, okay, you do want to back up your databases and all that kind of stuff. But really, I think even more important is to actually read all the stuff. I think you kind of have to do both. Reading the change notes, um, which will tell you what... Um, there used to be an appendix or something where all of the change, all of the changes were. Um, so every time they release a new version, they'll give you. Oh, here we go. Change history. Ah, I knew it was somewhere. So you can go all the way back and you know pick your version. Maybe you're on you know 3.3.22, and you you know just read all of these things. Read every single. That's why I said it's good two two to four hours of reading all this stuff. You know, so things like this. If you're using 3.23.22 and you want to upgrade, you know, you don't have to go upgrade each of these minor minor ones. But you should know that you know once you upgrade to 4.0 and 4.1, you know the sort order for German is going to be changed, and so you're going to have to change it with the repair table. You know, there's so you're going to want to. It's a lot of reading. Um, okay. You know, things like optimizer didn't use keys properly when using left join on an empty table. Um, the application may have, you know, a hack in place to deal with that kind of thing. If, you know, if that case ever came up. So that's why it's kind of good to know, you know, your application and things like that. And even, even if you're doing a MySQL dump and restore, um, which is probably the best way to do it, um, you still have to know these things because um, the application stuff might, you might get weird behavior that you're not expecting okay. because of a lot of the stuff. So basically, you want to go to Appendix B, which is the, the change history, and just read every single one. Um, so yeah. I'm paranoid, so I do it even when I upgrade a minor revision. You know, if I upgrade from 4.1.19 to 4.1.20, I'll just read it and, you know, I'll spend an hour reading it or half an hour reading it, and then I'll upgrade and everything will be fine. Okay, looks like I got my work cut out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's more than a little bit of work. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're paying for it, so, you know. You'll also really, really get to know every single feature of MySQL if you do this, because you'll know all of the little things that were like, oh, I never knew that was there. So, alrighty. Anyone else? Do you upgrade every minor version? Do I upgrade every minor version? Um, occasionally, not every time one is released, but occasionally I'll go and I'll read the release notes to see if there is anything that I want. Um, but usually I don't, I don't upgrade unless there's something that I actually need or if there's a security vulnerability or whatever. Um, just because it's, you know, to go through testing and all that kind of stuff, um, is uh, it's difficult and you might miss something. You know, we don't have perfect QA at my job, so yeah. Um, but uh, occasionally, and you know, sometimes you'll have a problem and you contact MySQL and they're like, well, upgrade to the latest version and see if it goes away. And you know, I've had, well, I've had problems like that where it actually did go away even though, you know, there was nothing in the change notes that says, you know, fixed lots of crashing. You know, and I was crashing a lot, and they were like, oh, well, you know, it was only like three minor revisions or something. I was like, you know, come on, whatever. And then I was like, oh, it worked. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, 
you know, it's up to you. If it's a minor revision, what's the harm? So, again, take your backups. You can always go back to the, I usually, keep, I'll keep the binaries around just in case. Um, you can usually download the old binaries anyway, but actually, that's something. I don't know if you guys know about dorsalsource.org. Um, MySQL stopped having the um, binaries for enterprise, or the source, actually the source code, I think, for enterprise freely available on their website. But it's actually here, um, which is perfectly legal and stuff like that. Um, but you can get, you know, if you want to get, you know, 5.0 enterprise, you can just download it and it's for free. And this is provided by a few um, companies that be useful to have this solid information technology that they make solid DB and then proven scaling which is a MySQL consulting company so this is a pretty useful thing but anyway we should get to the fun stuff well it's all fun